Well, hello, everybody. It's a special day. My name is John Taylor. I go by Arbitrage in the Numerai Rocket Chat. This is the first meeting, or introduction at least, of the Numerai Council of Elders. I have six of seven, six of seven pieces. GRB is going to join shortly, but I wanted to go ahead and get started so we don't run out of time. So uh, I guess I can just start from the top, right? Um, I'm going to start above me with with Siraj. Siraj, can you introduce yourself to the folks and uh, maybe give what your focus is going to be on the council? So, okay. Hello, fam. Uh, I'm Suraj Parma. I started participating in 2018, June 2018, and I've been since then participating without missing any rounds. I have wrote some blogs about how they started and build the library. Current focus is, uh, is on building tools that would get new users, that would be helpful to new users. Okay, so you're going to focus on new user outreach? That's close to my heart. I like that a lot. Yeah. So Siraj is one of seven. And, and by the way, JRB joins us. Now we are a full council. Everybody's here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Siraj, over your shoulder is UUAZ. And in fact, uh, this is their first time joining office hours. Indeed. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, let me quickly introduce myself. Um, I'm Wolfgang. I'm participating in the tournament since uh, a few rounds before NMR was introduced. Uh, so like beginning of 2017. Uh, I live in Germany, um, and you might know that I spent some time on the Python API and some tooling around. Um, Excellent work, friend. Excellent work. <laughs> thanks. Um, and I believe that's also the one one of the things we should focus on, like get some more participants and the community to help with those uh, with that tooling uh, because I mean when I look at my codes for for the competition there's just a tiny fraction which is my secret source and the actual thing that I'm doing and then there's lots of stuff around and uh, I imagine that everyone is building that stuff around um, so if we can work together and get some more people to help on that tooling it makes it easier for newcomers but it also probably improves the quality for the rest of us because we don't have to worry about bugs. Uh, we know what, what's working and what's not. And um, yeah, so I will, I'd like to push that forward. Uh, I know that Numerai themselves, they are giving bounties for this, this kind of work, but we as a council, maybe we can push it a bit further, like say things that we want to build uh, uh, should be built and give bounties for that. But let's see. But that's going to be my focus. Awesome. So I, I did miss one thing. I forgot to ask everybody's geographical representation because we are a very diverse geographical group. And I wanted to kind of say that. Siraj, where are you located in the world? I am in India. So okay. So Siraj is in India. You, you, AZ, you are in Germany, correct? Correct. Okay. Well, JRB, where are you in the world? Tell us about yourself, JRB. Uh oh, he's muted, I think. Yeah, can you guys hear me now? Yep, yep there he is. I know I, that yeah. two-week break, everybody forgot how to use Zoom. I'm sorry, it's my bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, too used to the Google yes. thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'm based in Ireland. Uh, so somewhere along the east coast of Ireland. I used to be based in Dublin, uh, but uh, thanks to the pandemic, I've uh, moved to a more uh, rural place. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's good. Awesome. So what's your what's going to be your focus kind of for for what you want to see on the council take on? Yeah, now, now that we've been elected, we can stop lying about uh, campaign <laughs> promises and things and reveal our true uh, agenda. Let me uh, pull my cloak but, a little uh, tighter here. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I made any uh, uh, promises. Nope. But uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, what I want to do is uh, I, I want to focus on signals because I, I think signals is amazing. 
and uh, it's 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 a bit disheartening to see that uh, everybody is focusing so much on classic, but uh, I, I think signals deserves a lot of attention. So I, I would like to evangelize signals as much as I can. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean every every we can't leave any stone unturned. So I would I would suggest that we all try to do that. So I have HB next. Hi HB, welcome back. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, I'm hoping I can be a more regular feature here. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody, first of all, for, for electing us. It's, it's an honor that the community thought we would be good stewards. Indeed. So um, uh, clearly we have, I'm with UAs and Siraj, we have a lot of people that are really good at making tools. So they, they've got that covered, the, the coding part. Um, so I thought that I would be helpful if I focused more on the kind of governance aspect of the council, figuring out, defining the roles, creating the governance structure, uh, maybe drafting up a little constitution, that kind of thing. Um, and I would say the goal there is to ensure kind of the long-term success of the council. And I, I see the council's role as kind of sitting in this in the middle of um, the interface between Numeri, the participants, and the broader NMR market. And so we can kind of we're going to be in a unique position to kind of ensure that that stays balanced and that no part of that um, structure ends up getting too much power and sinking the rest of it. So I think that we, if, if we can uh, think a bit about how best to um, organize this council, particularly, I, I, I really liked that legitimacy discussion that Vitalik had the other day. Um, thinking about that, figuring out how to uh, ensure that we have long-term legitimacy to continue new where I going forward. I think that's a, that'd be a cool thing to work on. I like it. I like it. So, uh, JR AI told me that he was hit by a bus. So I'm going to let him go and speak briefly and then perhaps he might want to take off and that's fine. So Jason. Yeah, I'll try to stick around. It's uh, okay. It's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, except you just muted yourself. <laughs> It's going to be a rough day. It's, it's, uh, it's all right, my friend. It's all right. So I, I kind of resonate with what JRB and NHB said, sort of in between the two, focusing on, on signals and governance. I was able to sort of corral all these votes together. And so we we've, we've made the thing, but now let's actually figure out what it is and uh, what we're going to do. Um, so that'll be a bit of a process, I guess. I'll, I'll also focus on so that the crypto side of things, setting up the multi-sig, signing transactions, we're all gonna have to do that or four yep. out of seven of us will have to do that. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. That's fine, very brief. Uh, where are you in the world? I am on the East Coast of the US. Okay, same as me. HB, I, I forgot, did you uh, mention where you are in the world? Nope, I'm in Los Angeles. Okay, so we have Pacific and East Coast representation. Uh, Dr. Rudy Kuhn, also known as the Mike and Man. Hello, welcome. What's up? So um, I'm Rudy. I live in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I have been participating in Numerai since I think it was August 2016. Uh, and I've seen the tournament and the, and the company move through a whole bunch of different regimes and things and changes. And I hope to bring that kind of uh, overview to the council and to new members and new people joining that things change and it takes a long time uh, to get where we're going. And um, a lot of the new users, I think, are, are very, very anxious to get things going. Um, but we know from the beginning that Numerai have always had the participants' best interests at heart. Yes. And so every time that we have made suggestions, they've listened to what we wanted and they've made those changes. So as a member of the council, I would just like to more formalize that kind of relationship between the community, getting all of those things collated together and then giving them to Numerai in a package that they can understand and implement in a much easier way. Because um, I think there's a lot of conflicting ideas uh, there's a lot of new users that come in and can, are confused about why things are the way they are. Yep. Um, and so we can help with that just to make it clear that things did work like you want it now. It used to work that way, but it didn't work out. 
um, and that kind of thing. So, so I think yeah. to, just to help new users on get the onboard of new users. And then with HP, I think just um, the governance of the council, just getting that straight, the constitution, getting that written up in the right way um, and making it legitimate and, and formalizing that process. I think that's what I'm, uh, I'd like to do. Awesome. I like it. And I guess it's my turn. I'm John Taylor. You know me as Arbitrage. I'm one of the OGs. And uh, I'd like to facilitate the communication between the Council of Elders, the community. So my big mission is to help onboard new people because I think that there's room for everybody at any skill set at any level. You can learn. You can teach. There's something for everyone. But also, all stakeholders are important. So it's not just participants. We also have to reach out to people who are active stakeholders, but are not submitting predictions. And so I hope to be able to facilitate that in some way. I am in Florida, the southeastern United States. So I'm also on East Coast time. And I think that works out pretty well. So I'm able to bridge the time between Europe going to bed and the Numerai team getting up and getting to work and kind of help fill gaps in, in those time frames. Uh, communication, I think, is the number one priority for me. Being able to communicate ideas, goals, and facilitate communication between the team and the community. Um, and just really help in any way I can. Uh, I think it's important. I'm excited to be a part of the council, and I appreciate everybody's vote of confidence. And I hope to uh, earn that vote again and be a good steward of your trust. And I, I'm sure everybody feels the same. And we're really excited to do that. We actually have a whole bunch of Slido questions and I thought that that'd be just a great way to just kind of roll through that uh, and see what we can cover. Let's start there. Anastasov has the first question. How frequently are you elders planning to meet? Well, we have never spoken about anything. This is our first meeting so we're doing it live fam we're doing it live so i would just ask the council uh what, what do you all think how, how often do you think we should meet we do we do have our own rocket chat now so we're we're in regular contact and we're we're chatting about ideas oh sorry it's a secret <laughs> <laughs> yes we do we, we have a, a private rocket chat room but it's nothing has has been done worth mentioning is mostly me trying to get the, uh, the group to come on office hours so so far that was that uh, Senator and Cap is on Twitch says, what about every day? No, thank you. Uh, I think that is much too frequently. Uh, and I, I, I would imagine that there probably needs to be some number of proposals to talk about once we get rolling. And in the short term, maybe we need to meet more frequently to go over those governance items that we were just discussing and kind of lay that out. We have not elected like a leader of the council, although I personally think JRAI has taken that mantle by getting us to this point. So I personally would vouch for him to lead us when he feels better, of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there should be a leader, but we can obviously have that discussion. Yeah, Lord of the Flies. I don't know. It's risky. It's a little risky, but we'll see. You know, like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolving thing. I thought it was important for us to get on and, and be in public as, as fast as possible. The vote closed, what, four days ago? And so having us here now shows the importance of it. So I wanted to try to get in front of the community and get rolling on it. So I would just float the, I would float the idea that probably meeting every other week or so is balanced between being able to draft up some ideas and, and actually chat about them, but have something to show. Yep. Seems like a decent balance to me. Yeah. And also some way so that people can view what we're working on. Um, I floated the idea during the elections that, Perhaps we could stream meetings if we have formal meetings. Like our, our, our chats, those are just quick. They're not really formal. But if we had some kind of discussion, I think that maybe we could do something like that. I, I don't know. Again, talking out loud, we haven't had any formal proposals yet. So, What do you think, Siraj? Did you hear me, Siraj? Oh, you're, I think you're muted, bud. What was the question? 
Oh, no, I was asking how, how frequently do you think we should meet? What was your thought on that? I mean, I have maybe, yeah, as Edge as said, weekly. Or every other week, yeah, yeah. And it stays off, says maybe once a quarter streamed meetings. That's actually not a bad idea, or once a month. Something where we have uh, actual business and uh, things to go over. That's certainly reasonable. Our own not, firesides about, on uh, the off fireside schedule would be good. Yeah, that, that's true too, and off like a alternate with the fireside chats. Those are very important. I don't ever want to step on those because we definitely need four firesides per year. Four. I don't ever want to override one of those. Anonymous is asking a question. Has anyone considered the issue of legitimacy here with respect to this council as articulated by Vitalik Buterin? Uh, that is reference to the video that was posted in Rocket Chat. I have not had a chance to watch it yet. So I'm going to defer to my friends who have. HB, I think this was one that you were keen on working on. So why don't you talk about it a little bit? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I, I liked his, I, I liked that discussion. Um, I mean, the, the ones that I relate, he kind of laid out various ways that organizations can get legitimacy. And I, I think the ones that we kind of already exercised in this was we, we put this to a vote to determine who was the first round of elders. So, so we uh, did some democracy there. Uh, I think also there's some aspect of, of we're just going to control this from, from the beginning. So there's some amount of, of what he called legitimacy by force. It just kind of ended up this way. Um, but we'll, <laughs> I think that a key, a very key thing is ensuring that we have diff that we kind of cover all the bases going forward. And, and, uh, I think that there are a lot of people had some really good suggestions, um, as we were going as, uh, JRAI was setting it up the first time. And I think just going with the simplest thing to start with was definitely the way to go, just to get the ball rolling because there's so much inertia for these kinds yep. of things. Yep. Um, but it can definitely be uh, optimized. And I, I think that taking community input on how to optimize, uh, how to best handle it going forward, I think is going to be, is going to be useful. And is, that's going to be particularly key to getting legitimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any but other think, comments? Uh, yeah. Yeah. One, one of the, I, seemingly the best way was uh what was it called legitimacy by performance so just doing things that make the community better that's kind of the, yeah. the most obvious way that this uh will work and and there we can be judged on that and uh i think richard already made the comment about defunding the council if things go wrong so yep. the stakes are, are pretty low the potential uh benefit it seems very high to me so i think it's definitely worth a shot and uh what, what do we have to lose? Uh, just time. I think it's just time. Uh, I hope to do a lot of good. Uh, Bench says legitimacy, excuse me, legitimacy would be much higher if every elder had a cloak on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, I think we're working on that. I remember seeing some discussion in Rocket Chat by NJ. Uh, one thing I talked about, I'm going to frame this next question because there's a little nuance to it. I, I was talking about like a mission statement and keeping it simple. So one, one of my things that I would tell my students is how would you explain this to somebody who that you, you want to impress them? Maybe there's somebody you, you trust and you, you want them to mentor you. Maybe you want to sell them something, but you only have 10 seconds. What's your elevator pitch? And so I thought about that and I said, geez, how, do, how on earth am I going to do that? And I, I, I thought about this one. And I stole it from somebody else. And uh, forgive me, I can't remember who originally planted the idea in my head, but I ran with it. Uh, I think a good mission would be to make Numerair a top 100 crypto by market cap. In doing so, I think we achieve what we're looking for. And we benefit all stakeholders. It's stability. It's promotion. It's new user onboarding. All of the things necessary to make that happen are achieved in that way. So the question was, how do you plan on taking Numeraire to top 100 by market cap? I think it's all the things. I know that's a very lame answer, but it is. It's, it's helping people to understand the tournament, being out with just talking about it in public. I, I've mentioned that before. But what, what, do you, what, others, what other ideas do you have in the council? I'll, I'll defer to my friends. Well, I'm working on something that would put new appropriate audience. 
but right now it's only limited to to my funds and my reach but if if it succeeds then i guess we can use some feedback from the council to scale it up like it's it's like an incentive oh. you can see it, it, it it's approved you're cutting in and out Siraj, but i think i got the gist of what you said you're working on some things it needs a little polish and some input from the council and then we can move forward and help with that kind of an experience uh grb what you were talking about signals how, how do you think we can push things forward with signals well in some ways you you already uh, covered it for this uh, uh you know statement about uh the onboarding new users yeah. and things like that uh but i i, I think uh in some ways, people complain about the learning curve for uh, classic, and I think signals is significantly, at least an order of magnitude, harder than classic. I think so too. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't really have any concrete ideas, but uh, I think w whatever it takes to make the learning curve smoother. Uh, I mean, it should uh, should be like a good. Be... Oh, sorry, sorry for jumping in. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. I was thinking numerae and, and signals should be like, like a good uh, game, like easy to get started, uh, but hard to master. Mm -hmm. And currently it's I like that. Hard, hard to master and hard to uh, get started. Um, so yeah, we need to well, make that easier. Yeah, I, I, I think in some ways uh, it, it is already a good game, right? I mean, look at the it's a good game, yeah. the daily scores every day. <laughs> we love our so, daily scores, yeah. Anson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's your best yeah, deliverable. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> One other thing. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot more we can do. Yes, I think so too. One uh, other idea I'll add is is um, integrating NMR into the broader DeFi community. So yeah. I mean, there, there might be some pitfalls, but but there's clearly interest in lending and getting NMR on the lending platforms, which I think could draw in a whole new market, which has the potential to. Uh, to move things significantly, hopefully in a good direction, but we'll definitely discuss that as council. Yeah. Also, I think more language translations. You know, not not everybody speaks English, and it's it's you know I think we could do a much better job of documentation and onboarding when it relates to other languages. And I think some of the proposals I'd like to see is just translation stuff for different languages. I think that's something that we can facilitate. Um, sorry, I'm just catching up on chat a little bit. Yep, so we already have an offer for Portuguese translation. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a demand item, and I think that would help with onboarding and smoothing things out. And it opens it up to every language we translate is a whole new potential community. So we saw what happened when Yuki made his blog post. Boom, Japan entered the tournament changed the game in my opinion in a good way so we definitely more of that definitely more of that so how do we plan on taking numerator to top 100 like i said all the things so you heard some of those ideas now aventurine has a question nj addressed this in rocket chat but it was when cloaks <laughs> when cloaks uh that one falls into anson's trademark answer soon uh I don't know. I think this is pretty good. If it's a cloak, it can't be too hot or I'll die. You guys don't want me to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to sweat to death. So we got to be You careful. can also have the unhooded cloaks that Richard uh -huh. tweeted out. I, I do seriously want to make those. Like I, I would casually wear that to the grocery store. It's so good. You don't like that one? Hard pass, damn. Hard pass. I don't know. I don't, it nice doesn't fit my aesthetic. <laughs> I think it would go with your kicks, but we'll see. No, if it, um, I'll wear it if, if the council decides that that's our or shtick, that's fine. Uh, yeah. It would be hilarious at ErasureCon if we all had those 70s era, you know, dope cloaks. That would be, that'd be pretty wild. So in that case, I'd, I'd be down. Anonymous, why not just allocate Council of Elders funds to Numerai tournament payouts and then use Gitcoin grants only to be funded in Numerair to fund Numerai public goods? The idea here is to be a, de, a a decentralized autonomous organization with votes by the council. And so, yeah, that could work, but that wasn't the genesis of this project, which came from Richard. So I think we're just 
going to go with Richard's vision and try to meet somewhere in the middle. And I don't think the Gitcoin way gets us there. How about that? Anybody else want to comment on that one? Well, I, I don't think we we have decided on a budget or anything, but I think it is a, just a drop in the bucket compared to the tournament payout. So I think we can get a lot more leverage from a few people focusing on it, on on how to best use those funds than just to to make a negligible increase in in payout factor for one round. Right. <laughs> yeah, it would be even at three hundred thousand, it's like point seven five percent of the total stake. So. Not enough to really rise above. Anastasov says HB for president. So got your, your what? first your <laughs> of what? Yeah, exactly. So sometimes it's best not to ask and just kind of roll with it. Uh, Anastasov says for signals, it'd be interesting to brainstorm what kind of data to crawl from the web and build up a community library to access good data sources. I would agree with that if people were building machine learning models on top of a feature set similar to the main tournament. I don't know. Uh, I'm doing something completely different. I'm kind of forging my own way. And so I have a totally different take on it. And so I'm going to dial back my opinions on signals and I'm going to let my friend Jeremy run away with this one. Well, uh, I mean, even if you're using, uh, say, uh, Yahoo data, which is a recommended way to start with signals, there's a lot of work in just uh, cleaning it up and it. I mean, this is how real world machine learning works, right? 90% of the work is in cleaning the data and yep. uh, only 10% only of the work is, or even lesser, is in building models. So I, I, I guess there is some value to providing some default, I mean, even if it's half decent uh, data that people can get started with. So I, I, yep. I have some sympathy for that idea. Uh, yeah, like I said, if, you know, if there is some common feature set and we could have as diverse models as we do in the main tournament with this common data set, then I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that could be beneficial. Like I said, I just have a different way of doing signals. So I'm going to stay out of that one because, yeah. Well, what if it is the data from the main tournament? <laughs> whoa, whoa, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't even speculate on that. We have to wait for 15 minutes. We have to wait 15 minutes? For the diagnostics. Oh yeah, yeah, for diagnostics. Are in the 310 features. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a good question, and I've been thinking about this question. I don't have an answer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to my friends here. But how will success for the Council of Elders be measured? Well, I I think uh, at, at first thought, uh, the success of the council is. Uh, is going to be an aggregate of the uh, success of the proposals that it funds, right? So I, I think every uh, proposal must come with a success criteria and- uh, Yes, for the I, proposals I, I think, uh, themselves, but what about the council? Right. How, how do they measure success for the effort that we put in? Hmm. Yeah. That's I think, tough. Uh, weird assignment is, one of the hardest problems uh, in the universe, right? We can do, uh, we'll do rocket chat sentiment analysis and we'll just <laughs> minimize the number of people who hate us. Yeah, the, the, I guess the objective function is to minimize hate on the council. Yeah, I guess yeah. maybe that's one way. Talks about hmm. uh, 10xing the initial funds. Like, there was something like that. Like, Say that one more time, Suraj. In pre, uh, 10xing the value of initial funds, there was something about that in Rocket Chat. Oh, like the so the initial seed of the council to have it yeah. grow in some fashion, maybe, maybe. Um, what I would say measure us against the mission statement when we come up with one, right? Are we are we trying to move the ball toward whatever mission that we state, or what is you know wh whatever that becomes? I think that would be a fair way to do it. So the next one, are you going to elect a chairman? Well, I guess I kind of bridged this one a little bit early, but is the Council of Elders a union? Can the chairman be called Hoffa? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, Jason had a comment on that earlier. Do you want to just recap that one more time, Jason? 
yeah, I, I just said I don't think there should be a leader. A, a DAO should be decentralized, so no central point of, of failure. A, a leader could be seen as a central point just to begin with. Um, that, that's my main rationale behind it. Um, but, but in the end, like all, all we're really doing, we're the, the end, like actionable things we can do are sign transactions. And that requires four out of seven people. And so those four, uh, all, all seven people have that same weight to become one of those four. And I, I don't see how a leader would really help. Um, maybe organization, people, right. Maybe some yeah. people can take the lead uh on organization but i don't think it should be a designated role necessarily okay i guess we'll we'll find out as we go Uh, uh, i'm sorry say again jeremy i said uh just like what uh, jrai said uh the quorum is the leader this is true Uh, i would prefer to have structured meetings so that we don't have endless debate and and really no progress through an itemized list those kind of meetings are like literally the worst meetings on earth. And so I would just hope that we have some kind of formal meeting structure so that we can move through the agenda, so to speak. That would be my only ask in, in terms of like a quote unquote leadership for the council. But I guess that'll evolve as we go. This one is pretty important to me. That's why I brought it up as we went along, but geographical, cultural and gender representation of the Council of Elders, if the members are okay with disclosing, and uh, relative comparison to the community. So we went through that a little bit. I think we have a really good geographical and time zone dispersion. Uh, Gender diversity is horrendous. Let's just call it what it is. I've long advocated for getting more involvement, but we have to work with what we have. So this is where we are, and it's a great goal to have moving forward, and we'll see what we can do going forward. I do want as much diversity as possible. Uh, I, I'm just glad that we can represent many cultures and time zones for now, because that was not- That should a, be a goal. It should be I a goal agree. of the council to, to broaden the diversity definitely. of the community as a whole. Definitely, definitely. Um, but I'm glad that we at least achieved one dimension of diversity in time zone geographical representation i feel like we pretty got pretty well have it with europe africa india we're really missing apac but i think we bridge it with the california representation and siraj picking it up on the other side so we're you know again we'll see how we can move toward that goal i like it i share that vision so here's a good one uh i don't know this question in advance any of you are any of you knowledgeable in ethereum and smart contract and blockchain i couldn't write a smart contract if if you forced me i i wouldn't know how to start that i'm making a meme token okay siraj is chasing the DeFi. <laughs> DeFi. i uh i convinced a couple friends to sign up for the udemy Solidity course, and we got through an hour and a half before we had too many drinks and stopped. Hey, but we'll get we'll get through it. That sounds fun. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> that sounds fun. How about you, you Az? Uh, probably the most experienced coder of the group besides GRB. Do you have any smart contract? No, oh. I deployed one smart contract once, and that was at the beginning when NMR was released, and I was selling. Yep. <laughs> I remember those days. Yes, that was fun, yep. uh, but no, nothing besides that. Likewise, how about you, Jeremy? I'll, I'll, I'll finger, fingers crossed. Uh, I am uh, quite familiar with the internals of uh, Bitcoin Core, uh, okay. but that's for old people, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Man, if you if that's what you think, that's fine. I don't agree. I think that's fine. You, if you want to hate on yourself, go ahead. I think it's dope that you know that much about it. That's awesome. So, no, I guess that that remains a weakness in the council, but uh, certainly something if, if there's a proposal. I bet we could read it and figure out what's going on. Would we be able to help do pull requests? No, that sounds like it'd be challenging for us. But the second part of that question, cultural representation is important. There's no Japanese, but topics representation is more important. 
Okay. I, that's common or more common than a question. Yeah, I agree that, uh, you know, I, I, I think we touched on that with having more language translations and having more com sub communities, if you will. So really happy with Yuki's blog post. I think that was uh, like a, a beacon to show us how to do it going forward. How do you plan to increase social sentiment around the tournament and the token? All the things. So that's my famous answer. Uh, we're going to do all the things because I think that's a shared goal among all of us. How do you plan to keep the community updated with what's going on in the Council of Elders? Meeting minutes? Uh, yeah, all the things, as much as we can. I think the more we share, the, the better the feedback we get and the better proposals we're able to fund. And the more we're able to align our vision with stakeholders. So yeah, like I said, communication is one of my big priorities and I hope to facilitate that. But stay tuned because I don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah, I think uh, transparency should be one of the core values of yes. the council. We have to be as transparent as possible with the community. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Um, you said it best, I like it. How does the Council of Elders avoid evolving into Numerai Politburo? We don't have that much power. <laughs> uh, yeah. Richard can just fire all of us. I mean, I guess the the true authority is definitely higher than us. So I guess that would be our checks and balances in a way. Also, you know, if the community just held a revolt, these these people are terrible. Let's form a new council. I, I would imagine y'all can do that. I, I don't know what that would look like, but if enough people sign, were like signers of some kind of declaration of independence ha see what i did there then it would be really hard to ignore and i would definitely not want to be against the community because uh, i am with the community and so if enough people told me you're doing a terrible job i'd probably just resign and let somebody else take over in my spot so i imagine other people do the same i feel like that's a pretty legit way of handling things yeah Let's see, do you plan to use multi-sig for every decision? Or there might be some middle ground where some decisions are voted without going on chain. I, I think that's middle ground is, is exactly right. So if we vote on everything, A, we'd spend a lot of gas. Feels bad, man. Uh, but B, it would just take up too much time. Some things can be decided on without having to do a full blockchain vote, like simple structural items. You know, moving to the next thing but as for actual proposals i think those definitely need to be voted on anything formal i think that would need to be voted on like a mission statement things like that but not everything that that would be onerous do you guys agree yeah i mean it's, it's clearly designed to for transparency and moving money and moving funds so it'll obviously be used for that um but i think some of the other stuff can can definitely be less formal and yeah, not cost two hundred dollars in gas every time. Yeah, this is something I was thinking about. Also, it only requires four votes for something to go through. So let's just say I see that the fourth vote went through as I'm trying to type into MetaMask. Let's say I don't vote. That's not a vote against. Do you agree? Okay. Yeah, until they solve Ethereum scaling. Well, <laughs> it'd, it'd be right. great if everybody could vote, but yeah, it's expensive. Because I thought about that, you know, because there's no reason for me to vote if it's been approved, but I don't want necessarily for somebody to think I didn't vote for it at the same time. So especially with the gas the way it is. Uh, apparently, uh, Jason, you figured out the last signer is the one that pays the gas? Exactly, yeah. So the someone makes a request for the multi-sig to send out funds, and then four people just need to sign it. The fourth person will be paying the gas. Oh, so even if I wanted to be the fifth or sixth vote, I couldn't. Yeah. That's good to know. Okay, so there you have it. You get four votes, that's it. It doesn't mean that you're voted against. So it could be the same four people every time just because of timing. I, I think that that is something I think we, we should definitely communicate to people so that there's no hurt feelings just in case, especially with time zone differences. Perhaps UAZ gets up and he's the first to vote and then HB misses it completely because Jeremy, Jason, and I round it out. You know, I, I wouldn't want people to think that there was any hard feelings, so. That's good. That's something we can we can work on and communicate to. One second. 
Yeah, Wiggle Muse, I, I do agree. Keep minutes. If we have a meeting, quote unquote, keep minutes. And that way people know what we were working on. Yeah, that, that's completely reasonable. And that's pretty standard for most business meetings and social clubs and organizations like that. Cool, cool. So Anastasia, when new elections? More seriously, how do you plan to set up re-elections down the line? That's a great question. I have no idea. We haven't talked about it yet. Um, I imagine that's going to be one of the things that we set up with HB's efforts on like a constitution mission statement and a formal you know, uh, write-up of, of what we're trying to do. Do, think, do any of you uh, have ideas on that you want to share? I, I, I've got an idea which is related to this. Uh, I'd like to see term limits for council members. Okay. How long? Would, do people agree? I, I, I don't know. I think that's up for debate. But uh, we need to have some sort of term limits. Yeah. I, I guess that's one way to avoid it. Uh, uh, I mean, prevent the whole uh, Politburo scenario. But, uh, <laughs> and I think it would be one of the early proposals, setting up what new elections should look like and right. get community feedback. Everything we do should have community feedback. Like every every funding decision, there should be a proposal for it with yep. voting on the forum. Um, yeah. Yep. I, I would be hesitant to set too short of a timeline because there's only so many OGs that are still around and willing to participate. And I think having a very long history with the tournament is extremely useful on the council because we remember things that have been done before and that didn't work or don't really jive with the whole made a model goal and eventually you just run out of ogs and i think that could be problematic so you know i don't know maybe one position is open at any given time i i don't know we'll have to figure that out as we go i'm mostly just talking out loud at this point but yeah i, like I definitely think it has to be some method of re-elections like if there's a vacancy how do we fill it that kind of stuff and, and i'm gonna defer to hb because that sounds along the lines of setting up the the structure as well. Well, I was, I was just going to say that I, I do, I like the idea of term limits, but in order to enable in, in order to, if, if we have a limited number of people, you could do something where you just have a gap. People are forced to take a gap and then they can run again. So then you, then you get the turnover to get new people mixed in. But if people are really good, want to stick around, people want them to come back, then they can always come back. Yep. I like that kind of balance. Yeah. That works um, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the only other thing that I was thinking was that and we're probably going to, it sounds like we're we're hopefully going to have a numer icon towards the end of the year. So, I mean, since this is the first round, it doesn't need to be a particularly long term. We could do something kind of a mix of in person and virtual voting for for something reasonably soon. Hopefully, I think that would be kind of nice to to make a first. If this is kind of interim while we're setting up the the governance, and then the the first official one approved with all of these things kind of happen when we're can when some of us at least can be together, that would be cool. I like it. I agree. Uh, there's a comment in Slido. It says, please make NMR great again. Yes. I agree. Although I think it's pretty great already. Yeah, was it ever not? <laughs> make, make it even greater. Yes. Uh, anonymous, what is the first ever thing the council plans to do? I think this was it. We met today and we introduced ourselves and kind of opening the discussion and kind of getting aligned on that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. We're doing it live, fam. Remember, we're doing it live. With GREI's initiative, we're here today. And so without that, we would not be here today. I think we'd just be talking and talking and talking. So thank you again, GREI. Definitely, definitely great getting us to this point. Anonymous, how to incentivize newcomers into the tournament. Yeah, uh, make it easy to onboard. That's an incentive for participation. Uh, show that there are intangible benefits to participating. That's also an incentive. I think every one of us that participates in the community has a story we can tell about something we learned from another community member. And it is a tremendous intangible benefit of participating in the tournament. That is a non-compensation way of showing that there are great benefits to participating, even if you don't stake. So I want to not discourage monetary compensation but also to recognize that there are other ways to incentivize participation and we need to communicate that again it comes back to communication in my opinion 
All right, so I got the Slido questions. Now I'm going to try to catch up with some of the other comments in Zoom and Twitch. A correlator suggested we write a DAO constitution. So I assume that would reside on the blockchain. Not sure how that would work. Lizzie Beth on Twitch. Hello. Uh, when and where is the first official proposal? Great question. Why don't you write one? Submit it. Is the Council of Elders paid? Not yet. Nothing is set up yet, so we don't know any of that. Uh, let's see. In Zoom, William says, I would find out what you're actually going to end up doing for a couple of months before worrying about how long you should be doing it. I think that's in, rela in, in relation to the election and term limits. I agree. Let's see what, it, what the time commitment is. It could be tremendous, and in which case there might be more frequent turnover. Don't know. We won't know until we get into it orbital teapot people's lives will change say there's a dropout due to personal reasons how's the new member elected maybe have substitutes one or two maybe it, it's all very good commentary and i would love to see that in the forums that kind of is permanent because right now it's just well I, I think it should be a requirement for council members to set up compute <laughs> <laughs> so they don't drop out so they don't drop out yeah 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 sure i bet noah likes that one uh, let's see, Siraj, can the council members make proposals? We're going to have to talk about that. We're going to have to talk about that because you can't vote on your own, right? That would be unethical. We'll have to cross that bridge when it's time. I would say everybody should write a proposal if they have a good one, and then we'll figure it out as we go. Richard, I like the design of the council room. <laughs> when will you council of elders spend the first money? We need to have some first, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is the multi-sig set up already? Yes. Jason's waiting on gas to come down a little bit. Yeah, I have to keep waiting. Add everybody else to it. Once gas comes down, I will. Otherwise, it's going to be like a thousand dollars. Yeah. But that's... Do you guys all have like keys for signing already? Yeah, we've collected all the yeah. all the addresses. Everything's ready to go except just gas is too high. Okay. Cool. Yeah, my thought was I made uh, actually inadvertently may have made the first proposal i said that perhaps the elders are sent a small amount of numerair or ethereum as part of the initial seed so that we all have enough to pay the gas on the multi-sig setup yeah. i think jason should be reimbursed for what he spent already because i, I imagine there's been quite a few transactions jason's yeah i figured that would be like a proposal in and of itself um and figuring out how these gas refunds work richard is saying he can send some for gas refunds i'll send you uh i'll send you the address yeah maybe the first proposal can just be like request for funds exactly. request for gas yeah <laughs> yeah it costs gas to re to replace gas and so i wonder if there's just not some kind of like goodwill deposit made like a, a slush fund if you will or the cash box so to speak small just enough to cover transactions so that we're able to, and then uh, reconcile it after some period of time. I don't know, but something like that. Lizzie Beth, uh, I think council should definitely develop and promote proposals. Otherwise, they just vote. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have ideas. I know HB has ideas. Siraj wants to work on a few things. We all have different ideas. And you probably just shouldn't vote on your own stuff. That's kind of shady. And that, that would be my concern. Definitely. How about well, uh, I, and we could have uh, we could have proposals, but we don't need to be the ones implementing it. I mean, if it's an add-on to some tooling or whatever, we could just say, okay, we have a proposal, we have an idea. Maybe someone is willing to to do the implementation. That's true. Yeah, uh, it's an RFP at that point, a request for a proposal. So we have the idea. Now you just have to plug in and say you can finish it. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good comment. I like that. Also, uh, funding isn't the only way we can help uh, ideas, right? Correct. We can give uh, more exposure to interesting ideas. So if there's something you can uh, implement without funds, you should definitely still propose it and we'll try to help yep. to the best of our extent. Yep. Uh, look, at, look at what I do on my platforms with office hours, with daily scores and chill. I try to do as much as I can and I'm always open to talk about stuff. So. You know, that's definitely something I can continue to do and hope to continue to do. 
if only I could get my air conditioning fixed finally. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a topic for another day. I digress. Uh, Jerry, I says, also, we have ENS domain, councilofelders.eth. So that is the address of the multisig. Cool. Yeah. That's dope. How, how did you score that? Because that just seems like it would have been taken. It was open. So I, I saw wow. it was open and I went to snag it immediately. Absolutely. Bad boy. Yeah. Bad boy. Awesome. Awesome. Lizzie Beth says, no self vote sounds like a proposal. Okay. Hey, maybe I did too. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, add to bylaws and constitu constitution or whatever, in my opinion. And yeah, definitely nice move, JRAI. With the clutch, save in the last moment. It's very, very good. Uh, since Richard, since you're here, did you have any comments or, uh, yeah, do you have any comments you want to say? Uh, I'm still kind of in bed. Um, good for you. <laughs> so I've, uh, I don't have any thoughts, but I do really cool. like this tree and this, like <laughs> this crazy room you guys are in. And it does seem like very cool. Um, one thing, I mean, always with these kinds of things, people have, um, people tend to focus on not being, not doing anything wrong instead of doing something right. Um, That's and, interesting. and so the whole point of this, well, for me, I don't know what it's going to become, but it was like a dynamic group that could do really do things very quickly, spend lots of money very quickly. Um, and get stuff done that Numerai can't do, uh, you know, fast enough because we're so busy. Mm -hmm. um, and I worry that it's going to be, it's going to be like, you know, a hundred page constitution <laughs> and by and bylaws and stuff. And uh, before we do anything. So that would be a big problem, I think. See, that's um, why I wanted way you to, to comment. You're the council of elders daddy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not on it. So um, the, yeah, the, the, there's definitely a, the way to please everybody would be to move extremely slowly. That's that's a good point. Uh, the way to make the yep. most value would be to you know sometimes not please everybody. Excellent, excellent comment. Excellent comment. Move fast. Try to do the best, but move fast. Like it. Uh, GRB says, "Let's rename ourselves to the Council of Degens." I don't think I like that, but okay. We'll let that one go. Well, I, I, I got this idea when uh, I, I think it was Suraj who proposed uh, 10x your uh, in, initial grant. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's something I would disagree with. Or a cartel of degens. I don't want to be a cartel member. But it's funny. So I've only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, if you have a final question. Oh, NJ has something. NJ has good news. Uh, they just got fully executed new office lease. Congratulations. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Uh, let me just catch up. Oh, Swish had an interesting comment. Does a hackathon with open source top submission requirement and generous prize make sense? Maybe. Write it up, Swish. Write it up. Uh, Jason, are you guys, so you guys are kind of ready to receive the money? Uh, well, right now it's just me on the multi-sig. So if you want to take that risk, <laughs> yes. Um, but I can add everybody, I guess, today. Gas has actually come down a bit. And um, with a refund, that's obviously no problem. So today it can probably be ready to be received. We should test okay. out a few transactions too, signing it four out of seven before uh, it comes Okay, in. well, maybe we just send something, maybe send like $10,000 of Ether and $10,000 of NMR or something like that, just to sort of like start. Yeah. Uh, and then as soon as you're ready for like the rest, we can do more like, yeah, $100,000 or something like that. Okay, that works. It's so council of elders .eth and uh, that should be like the reverse name too, but I'll get the like full address. Okay. Awesome. Super dope. Love to hear it. We're about out of time. Uh, any other final comments or questions from the council? Well, I just want to say thank you, everybody. 
first off, I appreciate your faith in me. And for all of us, I know that I sh they share my sentiment in that. We want to do a good job. We hope to represent the, all the stakeholders. And uh, definitely send ideas our way. We're going to listen and we'll try to communicate as, we, as best we can. A any final comments, folks? Seeing none, thank you for tuning in to another Office Hours of Arbitrage. This was season four, episode nine. We've got three left to round out this season. Thank you to the team who joined us today. And also thanks for all seven council members for coming on. It was awesome to have the full group. Rudy had to take off. You got to look for the exoplanets. Work must continue. And I know HB also has to hop and get back to studying Mars and getting us ready for all that fun stuff. So thanks again, everybody. We'll see you in Rocket Chat. And may the burn be in your favor. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.